In 2012, Richard Whitehead won gold at the London Paralympics, achieving a lifelong dream of becoming the fastest man on blades. But it's not all about winning medals, it's about the kind of impact and the legacy that you can leave on not just sport, but obviously the people that are inspired by sport. But as the WMGT crossed the finish line in London, the medical aid organisation Médecins Sans Frontières, also known as Doctors Without Borders, were treating casualties of the conflict in Syria. I don't know if I'm ever shocked so much as sometimes appalled by what uh, munitions can do to the body and what, uh, what our fellow man can do to, to each other. Now the aid organisation have invited Richard to an MSF-supported hospital on the Jordanian border with Syria. <laughs> The patients here have escaped Syria with their lives, but many have lost limbs. So how will they react to a professional athlete from Britain? At the MSF-supported hospital in Al Ramtha, people who have sustained traumatic injuries in the conflict undergo treatment rehabilitation and counselling. This project is uh, different from some of the other ones that, uh, that MSF is involved with. Uh, a lot more um, severe uh, wartime injuries, that is particularly uh, war injuries due to uh, uh, munitions, blasts, uh, uh, artillery, mines, explosives, uh, which can be very devastating uh, to the to the patients involved, the victims of the, the Syrian wars. Rather than a simple gunshot, which may heal up after a few days, it often takes weeks or months to heal, heal in from uh, wounds like this. And it can take uh, 15, 20, 30 operations uh, on the, the part of myself and our orthopedic surgeon in order to get these patients in, on the road to recovery. Today, Richard is meeting Ali, who was injured when a barrel bomb exploded near his house. Hello, Jihaz. Uh, like, from where did you get this? Um, these legs are from Great Britain. Uh, can you give us? <laughs> uh, each each um, set of prosthetics is made specifically for the user. I'm above the knee, so I need a knee joint. You're below the knee, so you won't need a knee joint. You'll just need a socket and then a foot. Although Richard is now one of the world's most accomplished athletes, he grew up at a time when there weren't many opportunities for young people with a disability. When I was growing up, my parents saw the power of sport as a, as a great opportunity to bridge a lot of those social barriers and uh, those obstacles that I'd obviously have to overcome in my life would be uh, lessened due to the power of sport. I learned to swim when I was four and did gymnastics at an able-bodied gymnastics club up to the age of 14. And as I um, grew up, um, obviously started to change people's uh, perceptions of what a person with a, with a disability could and, and, and couldn't do. Whilst Richard was born with his disability and has worn prosthetic legs all his life, Ali is still getting used to the idea. Yeah, into the holes at the back. Uh, it's 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 a lot. Does it work on its own? No, I have to work here. Who works here? You work here. Do you work with this? Not with these, no. I've got um, other legs that I run with. It will still be many weeks before Ali can be fitted with prosthetics and walk again. First, he must undergo physiotherapy and psychological counselling in order to come to terms with his loss. Ali, he has a baloney amputation um, with some unstable mood. As he and other patients who lost uh, a part of their body, it's not easy for him. Uh, it's very difficult because he's a young and uh, he thinks about marriage, about work, about that, which infer interfere with uh, his situation. I have to encourage him too much and push him to do that exercise in a way that's um, not give him, um, I think that you are unable to do anything. Many patients who suffer a traumatic amputation or uh, like any great loss or in denial that this has occurred to them and they, they don't want to think about what life is going to be like without 
without their lower leg, for example. Doctor, when I was here, when I came here and saw this situation, when I came here and saw this situation, I was worried a lot. When I saw this situation, I was worried. I mean, with the time, I was worried. No. When he came here, the patient had depressed about the future. He lost the, the limb below knee amputation and he thinking about how to walk and how to live without the, the rest of limb. Although the hospital in Al-Ramtha is less than two miles from the Syrian border, for Ali, it couldn't be any further from the life he used to know. I was in Syria. I was in Syria. I أفوت الدار ألاقي أبوي وأمي جوا الدار أفوت ألاقي أخوتي هسه بسوريا لما كنت أفوت على الدار أتذكر أيام زمان ما ألاقي حدا هون ننجن بس إنه أنا شعور لقدام أرتش بطرف ما بديش شيء and it's really important to have goals and aspirations in life and whatever your your circumstance here in a conflict situation it's about being positive and and guiding people through the process of, of getting back onto their feet, uh, getting back to their loved ones. And uh, that's really important that, that somebody like myself can, can, can come in and relate to their circumstance through my, my disability and some of the challenges that I've had to overcome. And hopefully they, they take that from my visit. Do, do you think that with the prosthetic you'll be able to get back to normal, normal life? Richard's visit provides a rare opportunity for patients to see firsthand what it's like living with prosthetics. They are asking if, uh, how long you have on a prosthesis and how you deal with them, what's the kind of prosthesis you have, uh, did you get married, <laughs> uh, how you are running of, uh, with this prosthesis. Many questions they asked. They didn't be imagine before that they can be walk again. But when they saw Richard, all their images are different now. They, he gave him hope. <laughs> عشان يفرجينا شلون نجري ويعطينا معنويات وشلون مستحمل نرتبها يعني قال لي عودت يعني عودت عليها واحنا ان شاء الله رتبنا طرف راح نتعود نفسي عليها. People like Ali face an uncertain future. Once they are well enough to leave hospital, some will return to Syria. Others will settle in Zatari, a Jordanian refugee camp that is home to more than 100,000 Syrians. Here, they receive ongoing treatment and rehabilitation from MSF, and their colleagues at Handicap International. <laughs>